Good to see you guys. You know, I'm so excited about what's happening at this church. I mean that with all my heart. I'm, I'm excited about uh, uh, the fact that on Monday I get to eat eggs and bacon again. Uh, I'm so excited about that. I, I'm excited about uh, Terrace Campus, what God is doing, and that, that new beginning there. I'm, I'm excited about football Sunday next weekend. Uh, I hate it that my Packers aren't going to be there, and, and uh, shame on uh, the Falcons for doing what they did. That was just ungodly. That was sad. That was sad. And, uh, and I'm very excited about renewal. Uh, night of worship, uh, you know, kicking the thing off, and then every single night until Wednesday, us getting closer to God. I mean, take an hour out of your evenings, commit to it, draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. You know, over this month, <clears throat> our key word, a key phrase for this month and for this year's transformation, and we, we've started off January by looking at four words from God to you and to me that create transformation. The first word, do you remember what it was? Let go. The second week, it was what? Be disciplined. No real transformation until, until we learn by the Spirit, self-control, self-discipline. And then uh, last week, Pastor Wendy just killed it talking about chill out. Everybody say, chill out. chill out. Come on, say it again at all campuses. Chill out. Yeah. In fact, take a moment, all of you everywhere at all of our services, say to somebody beside you, take a chill pill. God wants you to take a chill pill. Today we want to talk about this fourth word that God gave us last summer for January. And this word is build again. Build again. How many of you would say you have at least one area in your life that you need to build again in 2017? How many of you say I got about 10 I need to rebuild? Yeah, me too. I believe the number one area of rebuilding that we've got to do for a lot of us is in, our, in the area of our finances. And for just the next little bit, I want to talk to you about how God can transform your financial life. What are the things that we can do as Christ followers to, to really transform our finances? And God's word shows us how to make sense out of, uh, out of our money. Now, I, speaking of making sense of, of our money, I heard about this little boy. His name is Jacob. And Jacob is always being harassed uh, by these neighborhood bullies. They're always pulling jokes on him, and, 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 and nothing seemed to make sense about this kid. And, and these mean boys, their favorite joke is to offer Jacob his, his choice between a nickel and a dime. And little Jacob every time takes the nickel instead of the dime. It just made no sense. But one day after Jacob takes the nickel, a, a, a neighbor man takes him aside and, and says, Jacob, those boys are making fun of you. They think, they think you're stupid. So, son, don't you understand that, that a dime, even though it's smaller than the nickel, is worth a lot more? You need to be taking the dime. Jacob grins and he says, well, if I took the dime... They'd stop doing it, and so far, I've made 20 bucks. <laughs> Makes sense to me. The truth is God's word makes sense out of our money. Now, let me just be upfront with you as we begin this evening. This message is a message we all need. Some of you, this is review. You're doing great. You're acing this thing. Fantastic. But then there are some of us, we're not doing so well, and we really need to rebuild our finances. And, and if I may be so honest, I'm there myself. You see, I've always been very disciplined in the area of, of our finances. Lydia will tell you that. But over the last couple of years, you know I've dealt with some, some sickness. And how many of you know sometimes when you get sick, you take your eye off the ball a little bit? Well, I did that. And so Lydia and I, for the last so four or five months, have been rebuilding, again, our finances. And the good news is we're, we're tracking. We're really making progress. So here's what I'm saying. Everybody, there's no shame here. We're all growing together. We're all in this together. All right? We're going to go to the next level. I'm going to give you right now God's ancient path for your finances. This goes back 3,500 years. It's not new. It's not faddish. This is God's everlasting word for our finances. It works in any culture, in any generation. 
So let me give them to you. The first one is this. You may want to jot it down if you're taking notes. How to rebuild or transform our finances. The first thing is courageously, courageously face my problems. Courageously face my problems. Now, don't raise your hand on this, but do you ever pretend that you, your financial problems don't exist? And don't look at each other during this message either, okay? Uh, you know, I'm talking about those times when um, you get that bill in the mail and you leave it there on the desk and you don't open it, and you don't open it, and it's collecting dust because you think, if I don't open it, it doesn't exist, or then there are those of us who will worry. We're worrying about our finances. We're professional worriers. Don't look at them, but you know who we're talking about. We're professional worriers, and we think by worrying about our finances, it will make them go away. But how many of you professional worriers will agree with me that financial problems never go away by worrying over them? You ever solve them that way? Me neither. The fact is we've got to face it head on and be honest about it and look for the help of God. God wants to help you with your finances. Philippians 4, 12 and 13. I want everybody at all of our campuses, all of our services to read this out loud. On the count of three, one, two, three. I know how to get along with humble means and I also know how to live in prosperity. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Now, most of you here know the second part of that verse, don't you? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But did you realize that verse, he's talking about his finances. Check it out. He li Paul literally is saying, whether I'm prospering or I have you know, tough financial times, wh whether I, ha I have a lot or I have a little, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In other words, in other words, God's going to help me. And I'm going to tell you right now, friends, when you know that God is for you and not against you and he wants to help you with your finances, that gives you confidence that you can face no matter what you're going through in your financial life. So step one is we've just got to be honest about it. Deal with it. Be honest with it. The second thing is this. Jot it down. Seek God's wisdom in my spending, seek God's wisdom in my spending. Now, let's just be honest. The reason why we got to seek God's wisdom in the planning of our spending is because we've already got a plan. And the plan is right here. Put it up on the screen. Ecclesiastes 5.11. <laughs> the more you have, the more you spend. Right up to the limits of your income. Right up to the limits of your income. And then some of us, we don't just go up to the limits. We go beyond the limits of our income. And that kind of spending makes us absolutely broke. In fact, some of us kind of feel like the guy who said this. He said, if robbers ever broke into my house and searched for money, I'd laugh and search with them. <laughs> so what is God's plan for our spending? What is God's wisdom in planning our spending. There's three things. It's in your outline. The first thing is prioritize, prioritize my needs. Why do we have to do that? Because how many of you like me, when you look at 2017, you've got about five things you want to do, but you only got about enough money to do two of them, right? So you got to sit down as a family, and if you're married, sit with your spouse, and you just dream a little bit, and you say, what does God want us to do this year with our finances, with our resources. We can't do it all. We can't have it all. So what is God saying about this year? So prioritize it. Then the second thing, once you know where your money is, is going to go, what, what you, you, know, you know what you want to do, now you got to have a plan to get there, and that is you got to prepare a workable plan. And yes, my friends, I'm talking about that little dirty B word, budget. Budget. Yeah, you got to sit down and think through it and write it out. And that brings me to the third part of that, and that is practice keeping good records. Now, here at New Life, it is our desire to help all of us get better with our finances. Because I know this. I know this. I know this about you, and I know this about me. I know this about every person on this planet. Our finances impact every area of our life, spirit, soul, and body, our relationships, our emotions. Everything is impacted by our money. It's a big, big deal. 
So here at New Life, we help you by offering every year this thing we call Financial Peace University with Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey is the number one expert in finance. He's he's just a guru. He's great. And over the years, we've had hundreds and hundreds of new lifers who have gone through this and revolutionized, transformed their finances. And I want to give you the story of one couple. Um, I asked them for permission to, to share the story. They gave it to me. Their names are Josh and Cindy Jordan. About a decade ago, Josh and Cindy were, they were living the high life. You know, he's he's an engineer, very successful, and and they were living over the coast and just doing it all. And then all of a sudden, 08 hit. But they were doing their lives without God. They were doing their finances without God. 08 hit, the market crashed. You all remember, it was not a good day. And all of a sudden, their house of cards began to crash all around them as, as well. And then they moved back to Bakersfield, had to move in with Cindy's parents. Cindy told me a few days ago, she said, James, it was the lowest point of our life. It was so embarrassing. We were full of shame. We went from the high life down to the low life, and, and it was just bad. But then one day they showed up at New Life Church. They thought, well, let's, let's give God a shot. So they walked into new life and they sat down and at the invitation, they said yes to Jesus Christ and they began to rebuild their lives. And rebuilding their lives included rebuilding their finances. So they signed up for FPU like some of you will do this weekend and they really took it serious. They went after it and they began to learn all these principles, these guidelines from the scriptures and and from this very wise person, Dave Ramsey. Now fast forward to last August, 2016, by the way, they had $169,000 in credit card debt because when he lost his job, he's an engineer, they, literally their existence was, had to be done on credit cards. Fast forward to this last August, they paid off the last part of that $169,000, and they are today completely debt-free. Wow. Is that amazing? But here's the kicker. They've been telling their kids this whole eight years, whenever we get debt-free, we're going to take you guys on a cruise. So this last August, August 1st, when they got debt-free, they sat their kids down and said, we're going on a cruise, but... It's going to take us two years to save up $5,000 to go on this cruise. Kids were disappointed, right? Well, Cindy said this. She said, Pastor James, it made no sense for us to celebrate getting out of debt by going back into debt. That would be dumb. But here's the kicker. Once they told their kids that, we need $5,000, we're going to save up for two years. Within just a few short days, somebody in their family passed away and left them a gift for five, exactly five dollars thousand dollars it's like god says man i'm smiling on you i'm favoring you because you're doing the right things it took discipline it took endurance but they did it now here's what i'm saying to you you can do it you can you can do this and as a church we want to help you so sign up for fpu it's going to start in about a month we want to help you just you know, just get your finances good and right and, and learn God's way. You can sign up uh, uh, by putting on a connect card. Just put your information, FPU, and we'll get back to you this week. Or go, go on our website. That's the easier way to sign up. Now, I'm very excited about this next step. Let's talk about it. The very next step, by the way, did we show a picture of them, of the Jordans? Oh, I want you to see that. There they are. They're on, that's when they're on their cruise, right there. Isn't that awesome? I love those guys. Okay, so here's the next step. Jot it down. If I want to transform my finances, rebuild my finances, exercise faith in my giving. Exercise faith in my giving. Now, giving to God is what the Bible calls a tithe or a tenth. Leviticus 27.30 says, a tenth of the produce belongs to who? To the Lord and must be set apart, this is the key word, set apart to him as 
holy. Now, people ask me all the time, say, Pastor James, why did God say to give him 10%? You ready for this great answer? I don't know. He could have said 50, 40, 70. He could have said, but he didn't say that. He said a tithe or a tenth belongs to, to me, to the Lord. And, and this verse ends by saying that the tithe is what? It's holy. Everybody say holy. Holy. What does that mean, holy? Well, I got holes in my pocket, James. Yeah, I got holes. I'm holy. No. Holy sit, simply means set apart. Set apart. It means sacred. It means this first 10%, this tithe is set apart to God. It's holy to the Lord. It's the way I worship and I honor God by giving him the first part of all of my income. Proverbs 3 and 9. This is one of my life verses. Actually, the verse before and this one. But here we go. Proverbs 3, 9. Let's read it out loud, everybody. Ready? Go. Honor the Lord by giving him the first part of all your income, and he will fill. He will what? He's going to fill your barns. He says to bring us the first part. Now, why did he say the first part? This is my experience, probably not yours. But if I don't give God at the, the top of the week or the top of the month, if I wait, it's not there when I get to the end. Right? That's why he says, bring me the first part because it's holy. It's sacred to, to God. And, and, but if I do this, what's the result? You ready for this? He will fill your barns. What does that mean? It means he is going to take care of every need in your life. That is not my promise. That is the God of the universe's promise to you. Give me the first part of your income and I will fill your barns. I will meet all of your needs during the uptimes financially and during the downtimes financially. Now, everybody, please get this. I am not a prosperity preacher, not. I don't believe that if you give to God, you're gonna drive Cadillacs and live in mansions and you know, be in Fortune 500. I don't believe that's true. I'm not telling you you're going to get wealthy, but you might. Why? Because I promise you, when you begin to do things God's way financially, it turns around. When you learn how to save, how to get out of debt, how to tithe, how to be generous, how to manage and budget and do the things that God says to do in his word, I promise you, you're setting yourself up to win. By the way, the best thing my parents ever did for me as a little boy is to teach me to tithe. I've been tithing since I was 12 years old. I've never made a dollar I didn't tithe on. I give God the first part of every dollar I make. Why? Here it is. Not because I'm a preacher, because I wasn't a preacher at 12. I do it because I'm a believer. I am a believer in sowing and reaping. You plant a seed, you reap a harvest. I believe it with all my heart that when you give God the first and the best, he blesses the rest. I believe it. That's why it's the, the, the first thing that I do because I want God to bless not only my finances, I want him to bless my life. I really do believe if you give God a teaspoonful, he'll give you a dump truck full in return. Now, the, through the years, more than anything else, tithing has taught Lydia and I to put God first in everything. Because here's what I know. If I will give God, if you will give God the first part of your money, you'll give him everything. Here's what the Bible says in Deuteronomy 14.23. The purpose of tithing, the why behind the what, the purpose of tithing is to teach you always to put God first in your lives. Now, everybody look up here. God's not interested in your money. He's rich. He's rich. He doesn't need your money. What does he want? He wants what your money represents, your heart. God wants our heart, and our money represents our heart. It teaches me constantly. When I give God the first 10%, it reminds me that not only the 10% belongs to God, 100% belongs to God. People say, it's mine. No, it's not. Everybody listen to me. God is the owner. You are the manager. Let me say it again. God is the owner. You are the manager. 
God gives you 70, 80, 90 years on this planet. He entrusts things into your life. He says, and I want you to manage my stuff. So that means on the day of judgment, on the accounting day, I stand before the owner and I give an account of my, excuse me, his stuff. You know what I'm saying? The abilities, the talents, the giftings, and the monies. God says, how, how, how did you manage my resources while on earth? Well done, good and faithful servant. So here's what I'm saying. If you will follow through and do what God says to do in, a, in Old and New Testament, give God the first and the best, here is God's promise to you. Philippians 4.19. And my God will, everybody say will, my God will, not might or could, but my God will meet some of your needs. Is that what it says? All. And all means all. God will meet all of your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. God says, I'm going to take care of your emotional needs, your physical needs, all of your needs by my son Jesus Christ. So here is the challenge. And I do this about once a year, and I'm going to do it again. Because this produces more miracles in people's lives than anything I've ever done in my ministry. It's what we call the 90-day tithe challenge. The challenge basically is this. If you pray and you hear the Lord say, yes, you need, you know, do this. The Lord, and you, you say, Lord, I want to obey you. You step out in faith and you tithe for 90 days. You bring the whole tithe. Tithe to the Lord. Our commitment to you is this. We commit to you that if you tithe for three months and God doesn't hold true to his promises of blessings, we will refund 100% of your tithe. No questions asked, period. I've been doing this for a lot of years, and I can tell you this releases more blessing than anything I've ever seen because it's, it's a challenge that is based on Malachi 3.10. Malachi 3.10, put it up on the screen, please. It says, bring the whole tithe, the whole tenth, into the storehouse. The storehouse is here. It's not Boy Scouts, and it's not your favorite charity. The storehouse is the church. Bring the, 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 the tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me. Everybody say, test me. Test me in this says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that, that there will not be room enough to store it. In other words, I give him the first and the best, and he blesses the rest. My challenge to you tonight is that you, if you're not tithing, you'll start. Maybe you have in the past, but you've stopped. I'm telling you, it's the cornerstone to the blessings in your finances in your life, it is. And I challenge you tonight to take that. You can do it here in this card. I think the card is in the chairs, yes? Or, or you can get it, go online. You want to go home and think and pray about it? It's online. Go to our website. Go to Give tab. It's right there. Put God first and just watch the miracles in your life. Now, I want to share with you a story from a young lady in our church. In fact, she's here this evening. She sang tonight. Who took us up on the tithe challenge and I want you to hear a story. Let's watch the screens. Um, well, I've tithed, tithed for, for a long, long time. Um, pretty much whatever I could give at the end. Um, $10 here, $5 there, you know, just so that I could feel like I was tithing and kind of, it was a little shame a little bit because I didn't have enough to tithe and I couldn't tithe, but I really, really wanted to. And then about three years ago, Pastor James gave out the 90 day tithe challenge and the church backed it with a money back guarantee. If God didn't show out, then they would refund your money. So I figured, why not? The first time I actually tithed, it was kind of like a challenge, like, okay, like you say, try me. So here I am, I'm trying you. So I gave the first month and it was tight and I gave the second month and it was tighter. It wasn't the $5 and the $10 anymore. Like when I did the tithe challenge, I tithed on whatever I made, I tithed it. I had been putting in applications for new jobs 
because I wanted to better myself and move out of my parents' house. I got a call that I was um, offered a job that not only doubled my income, but I got free benefits. I was at a friend's pool party and I got the call and I did a little dance and I was really excited. And then it hit me like, tomorrow the 90 day challenge is over. It was on a Saturday and next it was Sunday and the 90 day challenge is over tomorrow. And God showed up. And not only did he show up and, you know, it was a little bit, he showed up and it was beyond my imagination. I, I was able to move out of my parents' house three, you know, almost a year and a half ago. I come home and I'm a little giddy every day when I walk into my door, you know, and when I get to tithe, as soon as my check hits, as soon as my check hits, I'm online paying my tithe right away before I do anything, before I think about gas or electricity or car payment or anything. My, I'm online paying my tithe. You know, a tithe now means I fully and completely trust. It's not, this is what I think I can afford, so here you go, Jesus. It's, you know, it's... I trust you. I trust you with everything that I have. And so I give now out of a thankfulness, not out of a stingy, scroogey, grinchy heart. Like I give out of God provides and I'm thankful for what he does provide. So here you go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for, for the job I have. And I'm giving you back what you've already blessed me with. Thankful heart. Awesome. Aubrey, so proud of you. Do it. You'll be glad you did. I promise you. Listen to the Holy Spirit. He prompts your heart. It's God's word. Two more things real quick I want to say to you, then we're going to pray together. The next thing that God says is this ancient path. This is a big one, and, and we'll just kind of hit it and go. <laughs> and that is reduce my debt and increase my savings. Reduce my debt and, and increase my savings. Again and again, God warns us about going into debt and not saving. In fact, this is a powerful scripture. Th this is a visual for you and me. The borrower is what? Say it with me. Is what? Is servant to the lender. It, it's saying that if I am always in debt, bad debt, that I'm a slave to that institution, to that bank or whatever it may be. And God, listen up, you're God's kid and he doesn't want you bound and in, in, uh, in chains to anything or anybody. He wants us free. And the truth is, that's why this is so deeply spiritual. It's more than money. It, it, it's, it's your heart. It's your emotions. It's your life. God says, if, if you get out of debt and you start saving, watch what happens. All of a sudden, you're let out of prison and you get free. You know, like, like Josh and Cindy, man, they're walking in freedom, debt-free, 169,000, gone because they said yes to God's truth. God says, I don't want you to be a slave. Proverbs 12, uh, 11 says, he who works his land will have abundant food, but he who chases fantasies lacks judgment. Chases fantasies, what does that mean? Oh, Pastor James, I... I'm in debt and I can't save money, so I'm just waiting for the Reader's Digest sweepstakes people to show up on my doorstep. And, uh, or I'm waiting to get on the voice, because if I get in that voice and win all that money, eh, that's called chasing fantasies, all right? Oh, James, would you please play, pray over this lottery ticket? $120,000 million trillion, dollars, and I'll, I'll pay a tenth to the church. Chasing fantasies. The next verse is, 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 it tells you how to do it. Proverbs 13, 11, money that comes easily disappears quickly, but money that is gathered little by little will grow. You save, you get out of debt, and you can do it, friends. You can't. Don't buy into the American lie, this lie you got to stay in debt. You don't get free. The last thing before we pray is check my heart. If you want to transform your money, Check your heart, because God's financial plan is more than a matter of your checkbook. It's more than a matter of your bank account. It's a matter of what's in your heart. 
Here's what Jesus said. Our teacher, our master said, your heart will be where your treasure is. Your heart will be where your treasure is. Your heart is naturally drawn towards, like a magnet. You're drawn towards those things that you love. For example, I love to bass fish. It shows up on my checking account. Ask Lydia. She tells me about it. Some of you, you like motorcycles. Shows up on your checking account, right? Some of you, you, you like to eat. <laughs> shows up on your checking account. I can go on. You love, some of us, we love our grandbabies. I can tell you right now. Show it up on a, when I didn't know it was there. Lydia, oh, hey, grandbabies. Oh, it's all good then. Here's the point. It's the truth. And all the grandparents are chuckling because you know it's true. If I love God and if I love the things that God loves, it's going to show up in my bank account. It's going to be in the check ledger. That I love my God. He's the giver of, of it all, so I, I want to give back to him. Wherever, wherever your treasure is, your heart is, where your heart is, your treasure is, it's deeply spiritual. Hebrews 13, 5, the closing verse says this, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Now listen carefully. If you've checked out, check back in. I got to talk to you. God says, don't you love money? Love me. Don't love money. Love me. Here's why. God says, I want you to make all the money you can. In fact, let me just say this. Some of you have a desire to become wealthy, to become rich. Go for it. In the Bible and in history, some of the wealthiest people were Christ followers. You know why? Because they did their finances God's way. God's not against you doing, having lots and lots of money. Here's what he's saying. And I just, you got to get this in your heart. He's saying, I don't want you to love your stuff. I don't want you to love your money. I want you to love me first because I am the creator and the giver of all that stuff. And I want your heart. Now, here's what you got to hear before we pray. When you give God your heart, when you give him all of your heart, all of your soul, you give him everything, then he gives you the strength and the wherewithal to do everything that we've talked about this evening. And then you start on this journey to a blessed life that God wants you to live. Hello. I know that today God moved in your heart. He spoke to your heart through the message. I believe that. And some of you today, God spoke to you about your walk with him. Maybe you're not in that place right now where you're walking in relationship with, with the Father through His Son, Jesus. No matter where you're at on that spiritual continuum, today you can change that right now. For some of you, this may be the very first time you've ever prayed this prayer. For some of you, it may be the hundredth time you've prayed this prayer. But if you want to make right, things right with God, I want you to pray with me right now, right where you're at. Just bow your head and, and pray along with me. Pray, pray something like this. Heavenly Father, as best as I know how, I ask you to come into my heart through your son, Jesus Christ. Please forgive me of all of my sins. Fill me with your Holy Spirit so that I can live my life the way you intended it for, for me to live it. And Father, grant me the gift of everlasting life through your son, Jesus Christ. I pray this through Jesus' name. Thank you, friend. I know that as you prayed that, your heart was connected with God, and you have all that God has promised for you. God bless you.